Hello, my name is John Spangle, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. I always explain that I came up with the title because I was thinking about the underground church in present-day China, Iran, and the persecution is so severe for those people for studying the Word of God. I started this, uh, it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning, and I started about 6 o'clock this afternoon, so I've been on this for a few hours. I just, the Lord led me, and I started doing, reading about the, uh, the feast. The seventh feast and uh, uh, seven Jewish feasts, and uh, I, you know, where Jesus has fulfilled four of the seven, and which one is next, which is the title of this. The next feast points to the rapture of the church, uh, the feast of trumpets. So, I'm, I'm going in to study uh, a couple things. Uh, my son, he has some friends that, that every now and then, so many times a week, they'll meet. Uh, he has friends. Uh, you know, around and overseas that he plays games with, and they always, he's autistic, but he's real smart, and he does these video games, and, and he's really good, good hearted, and I'm very proud of him, but uh, you might hear him mumble in the background, because he's, it's one of them late night games he's doing with his friends, uh, the other thing is, I've been training with my grandson, uh, I study God's word daily, uh, I try to, I've had a lot of health issues, I try to do some physical things, and I, I do explain some, uh, I have some things from my grandson he wanted to learn about while doing combat training because I, I trained a lot of training in the military and I did a lot of training with soldiers. So the reason why the only thing I mention is because sometimes you'll see my knuckles be like, his knuckles, they're so nasty. And I, I do like kind of like iron iron fist training. Not necessary. God, God protects us. Uh, but in life, some of us are, are uh, warriors. I'm not big. I've done some different forms of martial arts. But I explain uh, a lot of times that uh, it's not healthy to do martial arts. And a lot of it uh, has a lot of religious background to it. Like I started out years ago training with a friend who uh, had spent a lot of years in Shaolin Temple. So, uh, you know, I didn't realize at the time I was young and still learning and young in the word that I shouldn't be learning that type of Kung Fu. So there's a lot of things, to, you know, there's combat, combative sports and things like that. Law enforcement, military, you got to be trained. You know, that's what God created was us to protect. You're to protect your family. And uh, God created men to be strong, not weak. So you do need to learn to defend yourself. And that's that's part of our lives. And that's, that's part of my life. But that's the reason why you'll see the messed up knuckles. And uh, you might think something wrong with his hands or anything like that. I've had people comment before. That's the only reason why I mention that. The next feast uh, definitely points to the rapture of the church. And the more I study this, the more I realize, you know, I've always learned, you know, been teaching and, and learning that, uh, I mean, let me let me say that I'm just, I'm a simple man. I'm learning that when I say teaching, I study God's word and I learn and I try to be obedient to God. Uh, but I'm not a scholar by, by far means. I'm so, learning so much right now. And in the latter days, I believe that it, our heart wants to be with God so much as God is bringing us to him. So a lot of the body of Christ is studying more and more. And I've been wanting to get into this, and I didn't realize it'd be so many hours today, but uh, I, it's been a good good study, and there's so much I've learned, and I just wanted to uh, speak about it and motivate someone else to maybe pick up and study on their own. But in my notes, I wrote seven Jewish feasts in Leviticus, four in the spring, which has been fulfilled by Jesus Christ, and three in the fall, which will be filled by Jesus Christ. The Jewish people don't see the truth about Jesus until the tribulation time. In other words, they don't see how these relate to Jesus, but they will. And it come to a lot of understanding. I do believe that these feasts will still be set, celebrated throughout uh, time. Once we, uh, after uh, we are with God for eternity, these feasts will be uh, still observed for eternity. But I, I look at the uh, New Testament with Greek, and I use uh, Hebrew in the studies of the Old Testament. I have two Bibles. I have one Bible I just got recently. I've just been uh, reading, and it's called the Israel Bible. I bought this not too long ago. It, of course, it's uh, the Old Testament. It's what the Jewish people uh, use, and it's edited by, edited by Rabbi Chuli Weitz. Who actually contacted me? I had a phone call, 
a few months ago, and it just took me by surprise. It was such a blessing that this man was in Israel, and we were talking and talking about a lot of things. And I had a blessing at the time, so I, I donated some money over there. I thought it was going to be anonymously, but I guess the way I sent it, they, they found out who I was. And uh, it was just at a moment I had extra money, which I'm struggling now, but God takes care of us. And I just felt the need to give over there because I was giving to, uh, there's some groups that they give to. And mainly I was giving uh, to help out uh, the children over there. And, and uh, so you have to be careful who you give to. Because a lot of times you'll give money to people and it won't be used for what they're intended to do. Also in my studies, I use, uh, I have the complete Jewish st study Bible. And it's, it's uh, even has New Testament in it, but it it's, speaks about, it uh, shows studies in, in Jewish people. I just got this recently, so I'm, I'm still working on that. I helped it use that on the feast. I have uh, other Bibles here, you know. Early King James Version, the Tunstall Bible, different things. Uh, that's an old English type thing, so it's just kind of something to look at. And I, I love books. I love bookcases, and I love a lot of books. But I was studying today, and I looked for the Hebrew, because like I said, in the New Testament, I studied Greek, because it was originally in Greek, and the Old Testament originally in Hebrew in forms of Aramaic. So uh, I look at Hebrew when I, I study the Old Testament. And Hebrew for feast often translated the point in time. The word is mo mohad, excuse me, M O A H D. And it's Hebrew for feast, which means translated point in time. The seven feasts are God's appointed time. The plural form mohad is modin, M O E D I N, used for feast, referring to Sabbaths and all the Levitical holy days. You'll find everything about the feast in the book of Leviticus. And also, as I was researching, Mohad, root meaning to repeat and can mean a signal was appointed beforehand. So just letting know that these feasts are appointed by God, appointed times. So it is with the Lord's appointed times, the feasts are signals and signs to help us know what is on the heart of the Lord. There are seven feasts. The first four summer feasts were fulfilled, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost. And then the last three of the seven feasts, which will be uh, fulfilled. Uh, the first four were fulfilled by Jesus Christ, and the last three will be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Are the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. And it's just ironic that you know I've been talking about the Rapture, and we're all talking about the Rapture. We feel like the time is close, and what's the next feast that is to be fulfilled? Is the Feast of Trumpets. Understand? A lot of people are like it's imminent, and, and I've studied it's imminent, but after today, I really just don't see the imminent imminency of the, the rapture. I just, I see it being on, and I'll explain as I talk about these feasts a little bit at each one, and then I'll explain more on, it, of course, Feast of Trumpets, why it, I feel it's just soon. I mean, within a couple of weeks, we're going to have Feast of Trumpets, and I just look forward to being with God and pray that I'm correct and I'm, I'm with you in, in heaven. I'm, I'm so excited. I've had a lot of health issues and, uh, you know, to get rid of this cosmic bag and my back issues and I have trouble. I have, because of my cancer, I have leftover because of chemo. I can't walk barefoot. Uh, I have trouble walking if I don't have shoes on and my feet are numb. And so, if, like, I stepped on a piece of glass a while back and it looked like a murder scene. I had blood carried all around, around the room because I didn't realize I cut my foot. I didn't feel it. And it was just blood everywhere. This piece of glass was in my foot. So, uh, I mean, was, I have it so bad, I had to, it was hard to learn to drive a vehicle again. So, unfortunately, that's a permanent from the type of chemo I used in my cancer. Uh, sometimes that happens. But uh, the, the next feast we're looking at, of course, is the Feast of uh, Trumpets, which I, I believe points to the rapture of the church, and we're about gone. And I'll explain more on that. But it, it just gets me how Jesus Christ... Fulfilled the feast of Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost on those days. So why would he not fill the feast of trumpets at the time of the feast of trumpets, the rapture of the church? Because we, everybody, all scholars agree that that's what it represents. Why would he not fill that? The Day of Atonement, the Tabernacles, which Day of Atonement, Tabernacles will be, uh, 
you know, Tabernacles is the second coming, and the, uh, I mean, Day of Atonement represents the second coming, and then Tabernacles represents the kingdom age of eternity. The first full four feast, uh, feast of Passover, was fulfilled by Jesus' crucifixion. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread was fulfilled by his burial. The Feast of First Fruits was uh, fulfilled by his resurrection. And the Feast of Pentecost was by the uh, church age, by the fulfilling of the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to go in depth in, on these real quick and uh, talk about this. As I said, the Passover feast was fulfilled by Jesus Christ by the crucifixion. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. The first Passover uh, we know of was Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 24. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said it to them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And he shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the blood of that is in the basin and strike the lintel at the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of the house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to the smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. So, while they were in Egypt, and they were Moses uh, had come there under, under God's uh, what God wanted to do, and they were trying to get the uh, people out of Egypt, and they had the ten plagues, and and the last was the killing of the firstborn. This is what this was about. If they had put the blood on their, their doorpost, then the, the spirit of death would, would pass them over and kill the firstborn of whatever houses didn't have this. Well, understand that everything represents the cross, Jesus, and everything. Uh, because when they when you hit it, they would they would they would go down. So they would they would hit when they hit it. When it means they would take the hyssop, just kind of like a branch, and they would tap the blood, and then tap you know we're doing this way and then this way. You know, a symbol of the cross. That's what the Holy Ghost saw. I'm at the Holy Spirit, uh, Spirit of Death. If I get that correctly. It's been a long day. As it crosses over, it will see uh, the cross. The symbol of the cross, and that, and I think that's fascinating. Jesus fulfilled this in Acts chapter two, verses uh, twenty-two through twenty-four. Ye men of Israel, hear these words: Jesus Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as he also, as ye yourselves also know, for him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Ye have taken and, a, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it, it was not possible that he should be coded of it. So, Jesus Christ's crucifixion uh, was the uh, symbol for the fulfillment of the uh, Passover. For feast of love, the next feast is Feast of Love and Bread, and it was Jesus' burial. Uh, that uh, fulfilled that feast. Leviticus 23, chapters, I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 23, verse 6 through 8. And on the 17th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must, must eat unleavened bread. And the first day ye shall have an holy convoca convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no several work therein. A convocation means, uh, in Hebrew, a celebration or meeting or gathering of people. Feast and unleavened bread starts the day after Passover and lasts seven days. So in Mark 15, 33, 46. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachi, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he called Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let's see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain 
from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him up to Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Armarthian, honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been on any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought the fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher, which was home of Alva Rock, and rolled a stone upon the door of the sepulcher. A couple things here real quick I, I love to talk about. Uh, when Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent in twain by the top to the bottom. I know the Catholic Church has it where you come in and you'll know, do your confession with the priest. That is, that is uh, wrong. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Um, you're not supposed to, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to go to a priest anymore to, uh, assist, you know, talk, you know, uh, trying to think of the right, correct word, uh, intercede for you. Uh, the one who intercedes for us, for God, is Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm against Catholic teachings and all that. And I, I made that well known many times over in previous videos. I go pretty in depth about the Catholic Church. Because I, where I grew up at, there's a lot of Catholic churches. But unfortunately, these people are lost. Because they're being taught uh, faith by works. But there's so many. That's, that's the reason why I make a point of speaking about that. But the temple was written too. Because at that moment, we have direct access to uh, Jesus and, his, and Lord. Now, the uh, Feast of First Fruits was fulfilled by Jesus' resurrection. Leviticus 23, 23 chapter, verses 9 through 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when ye be come unto the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And ye shall weigh the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow at the Sabbath, the priest should wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye have the sheaf on the lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering on the Lord, unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be ten deals a fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hen. And I want to just give it um, so we understand. A hen is a Hebrew unit of liquid equal to 5.5 quarts. And ye shall eat thereof bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day. That ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So Jesus fulfilled this in 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in shall Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they are Christ at his coming. And I don't believe this is talking about a second coming. This is coming in the clouds. Uh, firstfruits, the rapture. The Feast of Pentecost, which uh, Jesus fulfilled, uh, being the church age. The Vigus chapter 23, verses 15 through 22. And he shall count you... From the morrow after the Sabbath, from that day that ye brought the sheath of the wave, offering seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two ten deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And he shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year 
and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire, a sweet savor unto the Lord. Then he shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice, a peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord with two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And he shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be on a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no several work, therein it shall be a statute where forever all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field. When thou reapest neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of the harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. This was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is when the church was born. Because uh, the Holy Ghost came unto the people. So Jesus Christ completed the first uh, fall feast, I mean, first spring feast. The Passover with the crucifixion, a living bread with the burial, first fruit the resurrection, and of course Pentecost with the Holy Ghost being the church age. Now the next feast, the next feast on the list is the Feast of Trumpets, the rapture. Leviticus 23, 23 through 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no several work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So I wanted to give some more understanding on, on the uh, Feast of Trumpets that were, that's coming up in a couple weeks. A historical view according to Jewish Bible study. The purpose of this holy day is summoned up in one word, the gathering. Since the holy, since the fall holidays, sorry, since the fall holidays call Israel to get to regather to a pure faith in God, biblically known as Yom Teren, the day of sounding festival of trumpets. This day became Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. Rosh Hashanah came to represent this, the day of repentance. Feast of Trumpets for 2023 will begin roughly on the evening of Friday, September the 15th, and end at sundown on Sunday, September the 17th. Another idiom for the Feast of Trumpets is Yom Hakish, the hidden day. Of all the feasts, it is the most mysterious one. It is a feast that is concealed as to when it starts. We have a two-day period, but we don't know exactly when it starts. It is a feast that is concealed as to when it starts, it can only start when the moon begins to reflect again. A term kasha or kashik is derived from the Hebrew root kaha, which means to conceal, cover, or hide. Psalm 83, I apologize, Psalm 81 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day, meaning Feast of Trumpets. This goes to words Jesus sang in Matthew. Chapter 24, verse 36 through 37. But of that day or an hour knoweth no man, no, not angels of heaven, not, not but by my Father only. But as the day is to know a word, so shall also the coming of Son of Man be. A lot of people like to use this, saying you don't know the day of the hour, you don't know when it's closed, you never, you can't pick a date. I'm not picking a date, uh, but I have, we have a rough time, and I'll explain that in a minute. But when it says here, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, or no, meaning Noah, were so shall the also the coming of the Son of Man be, meaning the rapture. What happened? Noah didn't know when God was going to close the door in the ark. God did that. Once he closed the ark, Noah was saved, symbolizing the rapture. Because what happened right after Noah was being saved? Destruction. The world was the flood, the rain started, which was the flood. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write you. For though for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, which you're doing right now, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should not overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and children of the day. Ye are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. If we are to watch, we have the time frame to watch. We, we might know the exact time, but there's a time frame. And the time frame, I believe, is the, the Feast of Trumpets that is coming up. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. We're not appointed to the tribulation. We have tribulation. Like I mentioned many times, back in the Roman times, Christians were thrown over to the uh, lions. That's the reason why I named this, this uh, channel Underground, because there's people being killed in China prosecuted, and same thing in Iran for studying or even having a Bible. There's persecution all the time, but not through history and tribulation. It's the tribulation. We're not, it's not for us. It's for bringing the Jewish people to God, and it's for uh, punishing an ungodly world, period. People have a lot of problems with that because they don't spend the time to study. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and defy one another, even as also ye do. That's, that's what I'm doing now. We're, we're, we're anxiously waiting. We're excited. The time is close. And we just know it's going to be uh, soon. Now, in order to go with this, I will talk about the other two that are not uh, fulfilled yet. There will be, uh, like I said, the Feast of Trumpets is the rapture. The Day, in a, Day of Atonement is the second coming. Day of Atonement the second coming. Leviticus 23, chapter 23, verses 26 through 32. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy conv convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever so it will be, that there shall not be afflicted in that same day, ye shall be caught off from among his people. And whatsoever so it be, that doeth any work in that day, same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath, a rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day, month of the even from even unto even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And this, I believe, will be uh, fulfilled when Jesus Christ comes a second time at the end of tribulation. And then he's going, Jesus is going to bring in the thousand year reign. Uh, the Millennium Kingdom, and then, of course, after that, e we have eternal life. Well, we, we become uh, immortal, but I mean, uh, the people rapture forever with him, but I mean, as for the people on the earth at the time. So, Leviticus, let me confuse that more, I'm tired. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33, 33 through 43. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, the fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by the fire unto the Lord. And on the seventh day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, and a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord, also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which ye have gathered, and the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. 
On the first shall be a Sabbath, on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath, and ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. Branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year, and shall be a statue for ever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booths seven days, and all that are Israelites are born shall dwell in booths. That means huts. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am your Lord, your God. And that is the kingdom age and, of course, eternity after that. The Feast of Tabernacles. The three feasts that Jesus will fulfill. The next feast is Feast of Trumpets. I believe that is the rapture of the church. And then it's coming up real soon. And uh, after that, later at the end of tribulation, will be this, the Day of Atonement, Second Coming. And then shortly after that, Tabernacles, Kingdom, Age, and Eternity. Why would Jesus Christ fulfill four of the seven feasts on a specific day and not fulfill the next three feasts on a, a specific day? We don't know when the rapture starts. I mean, we know it's around the eve of Friday, the 15th of September. You've got, and then when it starts between that and Saturday, it will end on Sunday. But, and there'll be a special trumpet blown. Oh, I'm sorry. The trumpet will not be blown at the end on Sunday. Because it says in, in Jewish that it's uh, hidden from Satan. So they don't blow a trumpet at the end uh, when they're supposed to because they want to hide from Satan. But uh, we don't know when it starts. It can start Friday evening, or it can start up to Saturday evening. I mean, they'll start celebrating soon. There's more I'm still learning, but uh, it's it's a hidden. It's the hidden. It's a mysterious feast of all feasts. It's hidden, and the reason it's hidden because it represents the rapture church, and Jesus will will uh, rapture the body of Christ up. For those people, uh, I, I put that out to try to not be too confusing. I know you're like, well, that's that was quick, and it, you know, you've done hours for that. Well, I was also studying in the Hebrew, two different Jewish Bibles, and trying to uh, uh, look at things, and and uh, I did a lot of reading, plus a cross reference and things like that. So just to keep my heart straight uh, and be obedient to God, I don't take things lightly. I don't take make, making this video lightly or any of my videos. There's been videos in the past I've learned. So I look back and thought, well, I may not be very good on those videos I learned, but I'm learning as I go. And it's a calling. It's, God is calling his people to him. There's a lot of people that normally don't make videos. Now, all of a sudden, you got a lot of videos. you got a lot of stuff out there. And I encourage people to, it's good to listen. I hope someone listens to this video. But I hope you also that uh, pray that you Look on your own and study God's word. I can make mistakes and I can be wrong. It may not be this September. But I look at everything that's also happened around this world. We've got, we just had the bricks around August of 18th meet. They're adding more, more to the group in uh, January. I believe the Antichrist will come out of that group. A lot, a lot of time people talk about the UN, the Antichrist. A lot more countries involved there. But the bricks, they had five and, they, and they're saying they're adding six more, makes it 11. But that's still, he could he could be uh, considered one of them because out of ten kings, because there's ten groups out of the bricks that they're going to make. Actually, the UN is backing them up on one thing, and that's the uh, ten areas. They've already got different at uh, ten different areas. If you research and look, uh, that our world is divided into. So everything's looking ready for the Antichrist. We know the rapture of the church. I've talked in previous videos. Has to be we have to be gone to allow him to come in power a lot's going on a lot's going on we're looking at psalm 83 war about to happen in israel i believe that's the sudden destruction that happens as the psalm 83 war takes place soon after the rapture of the church the uh five heifers uh, uh at least one of them i don't know if it's one or two of them are of age this month uh by april there'll be more of age but they're uh They've are, I mean, they could do the ceremony now, but they're waiting for April. They're pushing for April. 
And I believe April uh, next year is when they're going to start building the temple. The temple only take about 90 days to be built. People don't understand. They've got the pieces for the temple. You don't build the temple on the temple mount. I mean, you, the stonework, you cut the stonework. They got a quarry, special place for the stonework. You cut the stonework there. And they've already been cutting stones. And they're, they'll bring them, carry them over, and, and then place them on the temple mount. That's the uh, uh, Israel happy about Prince of Saudi trying to get with them and make a treaty. That's where they're thinking peace and safety because uh, Prince of Saudi Arabia is going to promise them, you know, talk to them, and, and they're going to give more West Bank to the Palestinians. And that's when God says, enough's enough. I told you not to split the land. And that's when he allows Psalm 83 war to happen. But at the same time, he uses the IDF and saves the people of Israel. But Israel's thinking, well, he's going to help. They're going to help us access to the Temple Mount, and we can start building. We'll have the promise of building on the Temple Mount. And then, of course, you have two days after uh, Feast of Trumpets this year, or one or two days right after it. You have the meeting of the UN uh, doing the uh, uh, their uh, what fourteen or seventeen uh, steps towards uh, their twenty thirty agenda. They're saying seven years. Daniel 20, I say Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, or maybe 29, talks about how uh, uh, covenant and many, and that's what they're calling what they're going to do next month, talking about the plan of many. So, and their theme is peace of safety too. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on all over. You're seeing such evil just, just ramping up, getting more. Why, my, you know, you talk about how, you know, you're mocked and made fun of, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you even think that something's a it's just a fire, really. We don't have flash fires in the freaking tropical island people. If you want to look at, we have, the United States has a couple uh, energy weapons areas. They do testing. Guess where one of them's at? So... They have that. I mean, you've got, look, look at the fires and stuff done. You know, cars are just accelerating, blew up, people in them. Uh, people not, water not being turned on. Police chief, you know, he's like, well, we didn't want to turn the sirens on. People think it's a tsunami, really. And people believe this. People are so gullible, so easy to be, you know. Don't get me started about 9-11. People believe in that and believe that, that, uh, uh, bin Laden and some of his group over in Afghanistan in a cave orchestrated 9-11. And uh, just incredible. You know, you talk about the Twin Towers falling and free fall. Falling, but there's like, no, no, it just it wasn't a demolition. Really, they straight down. Building 7, you got one tower going like at 9.30 or something in the morning. A few minutes later, the other tower 10-something. And then at 5.30 at night, you got tower building 7 falling down. And they say, well, that was resilient. resilient. I can't even say the word right. Fire. What the heck are you talking about? I talked to my, fa my father about that. He was uh, 35 years on the fire department. We talked about fires and stuff. <laughs> and he just laughed at different things, people. And just different things, you know. I, I could go on about 9-11. I'm a big person on that. People call you conspiracy theorist. Um, they make fun of you. Why? Because you have the intellect to think outside the box. And not agree with many people. And when you don't agree with many people, then that's when people come at you. But as a Christian, you're strong. You have God. You don't have man's silliness. And you don't, I don't care about, you know, people say or do. And they, they can mock me all they want. I let it go. I go by God's word. And that's what matters to me. And that's all that matters is, is God. God's in everything in my life. He's helped me so much. So many times I even shouldn't be here right now. And God has helped me through. I've talked previous videos. You know, I'm a combat veteran. I've had a lot of experience. A lot of different things happen to me. I mean, uh, it's just incredible. 20 years ago, I was in a train wreck. How many people get hit by a train, just totaled, and yet you just walk out of it? I mean, it looked like a person put a hand here and put my car together. Just where I sat was left. The engine and everything was gone. The train hit me, just drugged the car. It just... Different things that God's blessed me, and I really believe it's, you know, He has a purpose. I, I don't, uh, uh, 
like I said, I'm not a real scholarly man, but there's a lot of people I've talked to through the years and talked to about God. And in the military, he's given me opportunities to, I spent 21 years in the military, so the last 21 years I've talked to people about God. There's times I learned and made mistakes. I'm not saying I didn't. You know, when I was a young man, first time in the military, first time I went overseas, I partied and did all that stuff like everybody else. Before I came back, I gave my life back to God and realized my mistakes. And that's it. You learn and you make mistakes and you, and you step on. I'm, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ for my past, present, and future sins. I try not to sin, but I live in the flesh, you know, and sometimes you give in to the flesh in many different ways. And so there's no way I can work, my, work myself to heaven. I'm saved because of Jesus Christ. He came and made that, himself that sacrifice for me, for everyone. No one deserves heaven. We're not that good. People get offended. Well, I'm a good person. No, you're not. You don't deserve heaven. You're a vile creature. We all are because we give in to the flesh. But we're constantly in war. But Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for us. And by believing on him, admitting you're a sinner, asking for forgiveness, be repentant. In other words, change your lifestyle. You're going to change. There's a big change. People will notice there's a change if you truly believe and give your life to God. And that's what I try to do here. I try to be obedient. And uh, that's the reason why I make these videos. I know it's not entertaining and I rattle a lot, but I'm, I'm wanting to be obedient to God. I'm wanting to talk about God and talk about how God's helped me in many ways in my life. And I'm so thankful to God. So I hope this gives you something to study, to look at. If I did not make any mistakes, we're looking at two weeks, and then our time's up down. Reminds me of when I was in the military, when I was in uh, Iraq. Um, there's a bunch of times we get ready, and we're going to send you home. And then, then it changed, and then three or four months later, hey, we're getting ready to send you guys home. We get excited, and then it, we knew someday if we, we survived, We'd make it home. I lost one of my friends like a couple months before we came home. So it was a constant. You didn't know. You didn't know when you were going to get hit. We dealt with small arm fires, mortars, RPGs, you name it. We dealt with it all. IEDs. You know, it was, it was constant. But, you know, I was able to come home to my children. And uh, that was a blessing from God. It really was. But I'm thankful for what God's done in my life. And I, I just, the time is close. The time is, you know, we sense it. And people don't have understanding because they're they're not studying and they're in the Word. The more you're in the Word, the more God reveals Himself to you. And that's how you have your relationship with God, is be in the Word. Study the Word. When I study, I'll sit here. It takes me a long time because I'll, I'll reread or think things through. Sometimes I'll stop and I'll say prayer to God or whatever. And I just commune with him, and, and that, that's that's everything. That's that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be studying daily and pray without ceasing. Pray for people that need. Take care of each other. We're family. That's what it's all about, you know. So God bless you, and I hope to be seeing you soon uh, in the rapture.